Let's take a look at how to control ATEM switches using the new DJF 4.0 control profile for Stream Decks and for iPads. First up are the new home pages. There's five customizable home pages for you so that you can create a profile. The idea behind this is that your first home page is going to be the things that you're most likely to use. In this case, I got some switching set up here. Then there's a shot page for recalling different things. In this case, I've got some PTZ buttons in here, but you could put ATEM buttons in there. And then a scene page to build different compound macros. The show page is things like connecting to YouTube, putting down markers, starting and stopping streams and recording. And then the queue page has 24 queues that you can create a run of show. And then you can control that queue in the top right here as you select a different queue. So you could skip a queue or go back and then you can action a queue by pressing this button on the end here. And you'll notice as you step back through these pages that this control panel here is always available. So you could be working on the scene page as I often do, calling up different compounds of shots. And at any time I can advance my show queue. So that's the DJF queue section of this, which is going to help you build a show sequence and then automatically step through that. From any of these five pages, when you're highlighted, you can press that and you'll jump into the main menu. So from your home page here, press that and you jump into the menu. It's meant to be very easy so that you could quickly jump into a page. So for example, if you're working on the scene page a lot, you can jump into the menu and jump back into your scene page without having to go back to your home page and then go to the next page. So just shortening the number of button presses that you need to do to get into the main menu. You've got on the left side basically all the ATEM controls and then we've got VLC, H2R, some slide control and um, PTZ control if you have the PTZ version. In the top right are the surface controls so you can have up to four emulators controlled in tandem as a group or you can have up to four Stream Deck XLs controlled as a group and then flick through these settings depending on how many Stream Decks you want to group. For help with your routing, you can either do auto select or you can do jump and jump back. So auto select is on by default and that's probably the one I would stick to recommended the most. It means that when you go back to the home page, it's going to select whatever button is here. In this case, I want to do a preview program. Um, if I hold this down, I can jump over to the program switching and do some hard cuts. By contrast, if I turn off auto select, then when I select my auxiliary, you'll see that these input buttons have not been updated to do auxiliary routing. They're actually cutting the program. What I want to do is to keep auto select on. Therefore, when I come into auxiliary, you'll see that this has been updated to do the right switching. The reason you might want to have that off is if you want to do um, jump and jump back. And so under, for example, the ATEM 4ME, if I want to do auxiliary routing, and I have a floor monitor here, I can automatically, if I select that, it's going to jump to the routing page and I could select um, the next um, input source and it will come back to this page. So you could very quickly jump between uh, floor routing this way or um, switching like that as well. The other thing you can do is you can hold to toggle instances on and off. So you can see I've got two ATEMs connected here, but my ATEM Mini Pro is not connected. So if I hold this button down, it will turn on and we can see that that is actually not set up. So this is not connected at the moment. Or if I hold it down again, I've actually turned that whole instance off. And so I'm not actually connecting that ATEM at all. Same thing with like VLC. If I wanted to turn that one off, I could just turn off VLC altogether or hold it down to turn it on. A simple press will take you into the VLC menu or into H2R and you can always jump back this way. And then slides, there's a Mac version and Windows version here, depending on what system you're running. Um, that's using Vicrio, and it's just sending simple um, keyboard commands to uh, a Chrome browser that should be in the forefront of your computer. Depending on the profile that you've purchased, there'll be either um, one, two, or three ATEM instances available for you. The Pro version will just have the one Pro ATEM instance. The 1ME version will have the 1ME plus the Pro and then the 4ME version will actually have three instances. You'll be able to control all three levels of those simultaneously at the same time. I'm showing you the 4ME here. So if I wanted to jump over to controlling the 4ME profile, I would just press this button. So this green highlight button is showing which ATEM I am controlling. And you can see that some of these options gray out for the ATEM Mini Pro, which doesn't have things like a super source and it doesn't have um, 
the ability to change multi-view. So let's work our way through this on the 4ME version. Once you've selected the 4ME, you're gonna have your um, mix effect layer here. So I'm gonna come into here. This is sort of the home page for the ATEM. I've got up to four MEs across here, so I can select which one that I wanna work on. At the moment, I've plugged in my 2ME Constellation HD, so you can see that even though this is a 4ME profile, these 2MEs are not available because the hardware doesn't support that. But if you had a 4ME switcher, then these would show up and register. I'm gonna go back to working on the 1ME profile. If I hold it down, I can um, switch this 1ME into a program routing rather than a program preview. Hold that down again, we go back to program preview. Um, there's always gonna be this input button up here. So if you press that, that's where you come into the input page and you'll see cameras or inputs one to um, 20 is gonna be up here. I've just got my multi views called one and two up here. And then on a second page, you're gonna have inputs 21 to 40, as well as uh, mix effect preview and program for three and four and MP3 three and four, super source two. Um, so here you're gonna have your black color one, two, and bars if you hold that down, um, or multi-view if you have this profile connected to a profile that supports multi-view routing such as the extremes or the pros. All right, back over here, we can control downstream keys. If I was connected to an ATEM that supports streaming like the extreme and the pro, then you'd have your live streaming and your record show up here. Also stream bitrate, IP address, transition effects, showing the clock, starting the clock, saving the startup state or clearing the startup state. Down the bottom, you've got a simple cut and you've got the auto transition and we've got the a good old fade to black and we can keep that one out of the way, delete it if you don't wanna get your show messed up. All right, back to the menu page, and we're kind of going to come over to the upstream key. It's gonna show you which upstream key we're working on. It's the ME1 here. If I change this to ME2, when I come back here, you'll see this is ME2, upstream key. So I'm always gonna jump back into the menu that I was last working on there, and I can have up to um, four MEs in this profile, and each ME has its own set of four keys. So I'm working on ME1, and you can see that I'm running um, keys four and one at the moment, and that's showing that's highlighted. So once we've selected our mix effect layer, we can choose which key we wanna work on. So I might turn off my key one and turn and select key two, and then I'm gonna turn this one on, and you can see it's a little black box here. Um, so we wanna fill that with something, so let's go to our input page, and I'm on camera one, so I'm gonna select that to put that into the routing. And then we might wanna change the preview, so I could do like a half cut, or a box cut to the right, or a box cut to the left, or any of these little uh, boxes here, or a full picture-in-picture -picture effect like that. So all that is built in, and you could very easily change um, the routing here. So if I wanted, for example, put in my computer monitor into here, I could put that screen in there and then switch back here in the routing. So very easy to jump around there and then we've got some flying keys here. Uh, but let's just go, I'm gonna turn this one off and we're gonna come back onto my circle because I quite like that one as we're working along. And that's the upstream key. Next one is media player. So we've got media player one, two, three, and four. Again, I've only got two connected. Um, three and four aren't connected at this moment with the constellation. So selecting which media player you wanna work with will then choose uh, the actual still. Um, so I'm gonna work with media player one and you can see that I have the graphic in there. So I wanna have my face in there or we could pick a different version or we could put up a graphic. A really neat feature is that if you're working with a PNG that has transparency in it, then you can just long press this to fade it on. And you can long press it again when you wanna take it off. And for example, if you have a lower third that you want to automatically come off after seven seconds, then you can long press the media player that you're working with and you'll see DSK1 Auto is turned on there. And what that means is now when I bring on a graphic, such as this one, you'll see a countdown here to when this graphic is going to fade out. So this is using the downstream key and then it'll automatically fade out and go away. And if I wanna then go to a different graphic, I could bring that one on like that. And again, it will fade off. 
And then if you don't want that to um, function at all, then you can just long press to turn off that um, DSK auto. You can also grab a still and it will take a snapshot of what's in program. Or if you hold it down for half a second, then you'll get a five second countdown and they'll give you time to compose yourself. And there we go, take the picture and then that will be saved into your media pool. So that's really handy after a live stream if you're doing YouTube thumbnails and you need to um, create like a product pose or something like that. You can hold that button down and you have five seconds timer to find your composition that you wanna use. The other way of navigating this is just forwards and backwards. That can help if you've got a bunch of slides up and you don't wanna find the next button, you just wanna have your finger on the next slide and advance your way through that. For most ATEMs, you'll probably only have 20 stills, but for some of the larger ATEMs, you can have up to 60 stills. And so you can just access that by navigating through these pages here. All right, let's move on to the audio. And we've got um, a master channel. We've got mics one and two. If you have the ATEM mini or extremes plugged in, I'm using the Constellation. So that has a TRS instead, and you'll find that at the back here, um, TRS. And so that's what my audio is coming in through at the moment. Let's find a channel that we can work with. I'm gonna to go to my deck here, my hyper deck. Um, so single press will turn on the channel. Um, long press will, orange will show you audio follows video. So the audio will only turn on if you actually cut to that. And then down here we have the fade or the gain mode. So you'll see this flips between these numbers. So if I wanna work with the gain input, I can do so like that. If I hold it down, we can go up or down like that. Um, up the top here, if I hit that, it's gonna reset. And if I hold it down, it's gonna go all the way down to infinity over five seconds. Again, it can hit reset, go back to zero. So that's really handy if you just wanna jump through and sort of level out your faders. Um, and then again, if I click here, we're gonna go over to fade. And now I can actually adjust the, the fader here by holding that down. Um, or again, I can do a fade out by just holding that down and it'll go all the way down to 100. Or I could do a fade in over five seconds if it was at 100 and then I wanted to fade it in, I just hit reset and that bring that up. Um, we can turn this one off again and then that channel is muted. You see I've got a constellation which only has um, 20 inputs here. And then if I had a 4ME, then inputs 21 through to 40 are at the back end of this profile. And then that's the TRS, the mic, and then some other um, mic channels for the ATEM minis. Macro, I wanted to get all 100 ATEM macros onto a single page. And so now you can navigate through your macros um, here in sets of 20, so one to 20, and there's five pages up to um, one to 100, and or else you can jump straight to a page and just press a macro to run it, um, or else you can turn on loop macro if you want that macro to keep on looping, um, or you can turn that off and you can stop or continue a macro here. Now let's take a look at auxiliary outputs. On the 4ME, you're gonna have up to 24 outputs. After selecting which channel you wanna work on, you can then go to input and then change the input. You can also select any of these outputs here to be the long press function for all of your other switching. And whatever channel that's been assigned to, there'll be a little auxiliary label above it here. So at the moment it's on um, MultiView 3 output here. But let's say I wanna assign this to auxiliary one output, which is going to my floor monitor, which currently has the multi-view in it, but as I'm going through my live stream, I wanna change what's in that. So to do so, I'm going to long press my auxiliary one out, and you'll see the little auxiliary label has moved across here, so it means that we're now controlling output one, and you can still do your switching by short pressing any of these other buttons, and this doesn't change until you long press that. So auxiliary one, if I go back to my homepage here, um, now you'll see auxiliary here on my input buttons is set to multi-view one. And so in my studio, what I'm looking at is my, my um, auxiliary one is fed into my studio monitor and that's receiving my multi-view. So 
what this means is I can do my switching to program, but if I wanted to do a confidence check of a particular camera, I can long press this function and you'll see it didn't change the program here, but in my monitor up here, it has gone full screen and I can check my hair, make sure that I'm not getting out of shape because I've been recording this for a while. Then I can go back to my multi-view like so. Let's go back to our auxiliary here. Once I've selected my floor monitor, we can go to input and um, I can change my multi view one or two into that, depending on what I want to put in there or program, whatever it may be. Now, if you have multiple stream decks, you can have up to four stream decks to sort of expand out these pages. And I'll go into that in a separate video. But if you're only working with a single stream deck or if you're just working with one iPad, then you can sort of speed up your routing process here by turning on automatic jumping forwards and backwards. So let's go over to our main page here. At the moment it's on auto select, so I could select jump and you can also, if you want, hit jump back. So now under auxiliary, when I select my teleprompter, for example, it's going to automatically jump to the routing page and then I can change what I want going into my teleprompter. So my um, teleprompter here is getting program one, but maybe I want it to receive the multi view, so I can hit that. And now multi view is being fed into this source and it has jumped back to the output routing here so I could choose something else. So I could go to my floor monitor and I could put program there. And so now I can see big program view up on the floor monitor and then my multi view is in the teleprompter confidence monitor. Alternatively, you may just wanna have jump and then turn off jump back so that when you go into auxiliary, you go into an output. So for example, my floor monitor here, and then I can jump around and basically switch, but stay on this page rather than jumping back. So that's the difference between jump and jump back. If for some reason auto select is not selected and you come back to these pages and you see here that we're still controlling the auxiliary routing here, um, that's because auto select is not being turned back on. Auto select is basically pressing whatever button is um, here. In this case, it's the program um, for ME1. And so if I go back here and turn on auto select, now when I go back home, it has updated this to be my program switching. Let's go back into the menu and working our way through downstream keys. There's four downstream keys. Again, you can select which downstream key you wanna work on and then you can go input and then all of your input sources here are gonna be routable into there. It's black at the moment, but I could put camera one or I could put media player graphic into uh, DSK2. And you'll see under here what is um, selected. So DSK2 has MP1. If I input MP2, when I come back here, you'll see that's been updated. So at a glance, you can see um, what um, inputs have been put into these DSKs. The DSK auto out, um, that's basically turning on the same function that I showed you before in the media pool where it had the auto function on here. So it's the same as long pressing this one to go off. Um, it's just a bit more obvious because there's an actual um, highlighted button there. So that is another way of turning on the downstream key auto out button, which is a seven second um, timer, which will remove the DSK. And then you can change the rate here by default set to um, 60, but you may want to change that from 0, 15, 30 or 60 frames. All right, multi view. You select multi view one, two, three or four, depending on what you want to work on. And that will update this grid here, which is going to be the windows. So here you could control uh, if you want all windows there, or maybe you just want something for program program preview, or maybe you just want sort of a four up. You'll see that these buttons here have um, a slightly different highlight on them. And these buttons will control these larger squares under um, one, three, nine, and 11. So again, once we've selected the multi view that we want to work on, we can then select a window source that we want to change the input for. So for example, I've got cameras one and two on this lower section of the multi view, but if I wanted to change this MP1 section into uh, camera three, for example, then I would go input. 
And instead of MP1, I would just select input three here. And if I come back, you'll see that that has been updated to three. And again, the auto jump works here. So if you come back to jump and jump back, this is where this becomes really handy, particularly for those auxiliary and the multi-view routing, because I can now come in and I can just select that and go camera one. And I could, you know, select this one, go camera two, select this one, go camera one. And so now I've easily reversed the windows without having to press so many buttons to jump back and forth. So it's a really good example of how the routing works with those jumps. Over here are four customizable load buttons. So you could create four different multi-view layouts and then you could recall that um, just with a touch of a button. All right, the last ATEM function is the super source. You've got super source one or super source two on the larger ATEMs. So select the super source that you wanna work with and then you can select the box that you wanna select. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna turn off these jump functions. You can see it jumped over there. Select the box that you wanna work with. Once you've got your box selected, you can go to input and again, you can just do your routing here. So you could change what camera source you want going into what box and then these presets will change your um, layout. So at the moment I've got a particular preset, but I can um, switch that around just by changing these presets on super source. And you'll see as I go through, these are turning on and off boxes up here. So if you um, long press a box, you'll turn it off. Long press this one, you'll turn that off. I can turn on the box and turn on box two, and that's how that composite was made. When you've selected your box, you can hit reset if you want that to just go back to its sort of default position, which is 50% in the center. And then using your manual keys, you can move that around and place that where you want to put that. And you can make that bigger or smaller. And then you can work on um, cropping the different sides in like that. And then I can move this over here and you can have your layout like that. Now, this is the offset page. There's two more pages. One is the presets. So plenty of things to play with there. There's the background page. So if I wanted to change the background here, I could select the routing from in this background page. All right, so that's an overview of how to navigate the new DJF 4.0 profile for the ATEM switches. If you wanna see how to install Companion and get a bit more in depth into the actual networking and the systems part of it, then take a look at this next video. And if you wanna find out more about the Companion profiles available for download, check out davidjoshuaford.com slash companion. See you in the next video, bye.